around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. William Conrad, the story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, the United States Marshal. The first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. Marshal Dillon. Come in, Marshal. Come in. Hello, Peters. Uh, you got time to give me a haircut? I think I kind of need one. <laughs> you're, you're the only customer I've had in an hour, Marshal. Now just hang your coat and your gun belt right over there, and I'll get things ready for you. All right. Yeah, hey, I haven't seen you around town lately, Marshal. Uh, I've been over in Abilene for a week. I just got back late last night. Oh. You must have come in on the midnight stage. Yeah, that's right. I sure wish I could get out of Dodge once in a while. <laughs> Not the way I do it, you wouldn't. You'd just be glad that you can stay here, Titus. Yeah, maybe you're right, Marshal. Hey, isn't this a new chair you've got? Yes, sir. That's the finest barber chair west of St. Louis. Wow. Well, 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 that's pretty fancy. <laughs> you bet you. Try it. Yeah, you comfortable? I'll tell you after I find out if you've raised your prices to pay for it. <laughs> and here, let me get this cloth over you. Here we are. Yeah, haircut's still quarter, Marshal. A shave? Yeah, it's too tight around your neck. Oh, no, that's okay. What about shaves? Price of a shave is going up a dime, Marshal. A dime? Now, Marshal, you wouldn't want to stay in the way of progress for the sake of a dime, would you? <laughs> Who's progress? Well... Anyway, you don't need a shave. Not today, anyway. That's a good thing. Just take a chair there, stranger. I'll be with you in a few minutes. In a few minutes? Yep, you're next. Right in line. Barber. What? I ain't next. Why, of course you are. Ain't nobody ahead of you. I said I ain't next. You mean uh, you won't wait? That's right. I won't wait. Oh, sure you will. I work fast. It won't be longer than ten minutes at the most. Now, you... You, you don't understand. I want to shave. I want it right now. You can cut his hair later. What? You heard me. Well, now, look, mister. You don't know who you're... Shut up, Taters. Get out of that chair, mister. All right, Taters. Take the sheet off of me. All right. Here. Okay, monsieur. I'm out. Then move. I want to sit down. Uh, you don't quite understand. I don't understand what. I didn't get out of that chair so you could have it. You're going to be troublesome, ain't you? Mm-hmm. And there's not much you can do about it. Isn't there? You don't see very well, mister. What? I'm not wearing a gun. It's hanging on the wall over there. Oh. You gonna shoot an unarmed man in front of a witness? Go get your gun. Put it on. No. Do it. You licked, mister. How are you gonna make me do it? By shooting me? Put your gun on. I don't like killings. But if you don't turn around and walk out that door, I'm gonna half kill you with my fist. Now you get moving. All right. You got me this time. Next time, you'll be wearing a gun. 
It'll be some different then. My goodness, Marshal, you you took an awful chance here. Who was it, Titus? I don't know. I never saw him before, but he, he might have killed you, Marshal. Now, that would have been murder. You got hung for murder. Why don't you quit shaking and let's get this haircut over with? He won't be back. Oh, hello, Miss John. Hello, Chester. I was looking for you. Been right here in the office the past half hour. I know you have. I went by the barber shop and Teeters told me. And he also told me how you handled that fellow. Oh, did he? Teeters described him to me, Mr. Dillon. I know who he is. You do? Mm-hmm. He come here about a week ago, just after you went to Albling. Oh, what's his name? Springer. Nate Springer. What? That's right. Are you sure that was Nate Springer? Well, it couldn't have been nobody else. Well, why? You, you said you don't know him. No, I don't, but I've heard about him. You have? Where? All over. Nate Springer's got quite a reputation. As a gunman, you mean? Yeah, he's a gunman, all right. They say he's the most nerveless gunman that ever lived. He's all ice. Pat Masterson told me once that out in Arizona, a man got the drop on him and Springer started to laugh. Laugh? He asked him what he was laughing about. Springer said he never had before, and he didn't want to die without seeing what it was like. Oh, my way. What happened? It's kind of hard to shoot a man who's enjoying his first laugh, Chester. I'll be darned. What do you reckon he's doing in Dodge? Springer's a killer, a paid killer. That's all he's ever done anywhere. Well, then why don't you go arrest him? Well, he's not wanted that I know of. There are no circulars out on him. Well, but you can't just wait till he kills somebody. No. And I can't put him in jail till he does. Got time for another cup of coffee, Matt? Oh, take time, Doc. Good. Good. And here you are. Yeah, thanks. Well, things are pretty wild up in Abilene. It's still a camp with a hair on, Doc. <laughs> Worse than Dodge? No, I wouldn't say that. Mm. But I'll stay here. Why? You're usually complaining about Dodge. I'm thinking of business, Matt. Business. What's there to do in a peaceful town? Uh, aside from delivering a baby now and then, uh, setting a broken leg. You sound pretty bloodthirsty, Doc. I don't do the shooting, Matt. It's men like that Nate Springer that you were telling me about. Doc. Uh, Nate Springer's sitting over there in the corner. He is? Where? Right over there. Alone with his back to the wall. Oh, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Well, he looks like a killer, all right. He is. But you see how he keeps looking around there? It's like he thinks everybody in this room's his enemy. And like that doesn't have friends. <laughs> he doesn't even take his hat off, you see there? He's all ready to shoot and jump out of the door, I suppose. How can he eat if he doesn't even look at his plate? <laughs> Uh-oh, he's getting up at him. He's coming this way. Yeah. He hasn't finished his dinner. You better turn around, Doc. Okay. But you keep your eye on him. I don't like that man. Hey, you. Uh, me? What was you staring at me for? Well, I, I wasn't staring at you. No man stares at me without a reason. I don't like it. I want to know why you were doing it. Well, now, look here, mister. You're getting all upset over nothing. You you ruin your dinner working yourself up. You tell me why you were staring at me, or I'll put a hole in you. I'll do it. Well, you're awful jumpy for a big gunman. Tell me, I said. 
Hold it, Springer. This is Doc Adams. He doesn't carry a gun. He doesn't? No, but sometimes I wish I did. Wait a minute, Doc. Well, you getting into this, mister? I am. Who are you, anyway? Matt Dillon. Matt Dillon. That's right. I knew I'd run into you sooner or later. Why? In my line of work, there's always some lawman wanting to interfere. Sure, it happened here, Springer. You kill anybody. Fair fight's fair fight, ain't it? Not when you're paid to pick a fight with a man. Like I said, Marshal, I knew I'd run into you. Springer, when I find out who you're after, I can probably find out who's paying you. Then I'll jail you and him both. Or you're going to lose a lot of sleep trying to find out, Marshal. I can stand it. You're the one that needs sleep, Springer, a lot of it. Without any bad dreams. I... Looks like the man of ice is starting to melt, Matt. Something's happening to him, Doc. Whatever it is, it isn't good. Sit down, if you've got time. Oh, I don't have to go to work till after sundown. Guess I might as well sit here and watch Front Street with you as anything else. Good. A little air is good for you. A lot of it would be even better. You know, Kitty, you ought to buy a horse. Huh? Take a ride up the river every day or so. I'm too broke. Well, I'll lend you one. i got a little bay that's pretty gentle. Imagine having more than one horse. Well, that's about all the government does give me, Kitty. A couple of cheap horses. I've seen you riding your arm. Well, I've got to keep him in shape in case I decide to quit. You know. <laughs> the day you quit, that horse will be as old as a man. <laughs> you may be right. Hey, look, man. What? There. Walking down the middle of the street. Springer. Now, who'd expect a man like Springer to have a little yellow dog? I don't know that the dog's his, Kitty. Maybe he's just following him. But he's right at his heel. I don't think Springer knows it. <laughs> he's trying to sniff at him. Matt! He shot him! Poor little dog, he didn't do anything. I'll be back, Kitty. Well, what do you want, Marshal? Just a dog. You think he was going to bite you? He might have... How'd I know? I didn't know what it was. Could have been anything. Or anybody, huh? I knew it wasn't a man. Yeah, but you just said... Who cares what I said? That dog shouldn't have been sniffing around. Not around you, that's for sure. Well? Why don't you go get a drink, Springer? I think maybe you need one. I don't drink, Marshal. Never. You don't have any vices, do you? Marshal. Huh? Yep. Nothing. Go ahead. Matt, is he crazy or something? I don't know, Kitty. Well, he's the meanest man I ever saw. Uh, he, he didn't shoot that dog out of meanness, Kitty. No? Well, why then? He's jumpy. Well, if he's that jumpy, nobody need worry about him. I worry about him, Kitty. You? He's dangerous. He's more dangerous now than the way everybody tells me he used to be. What do you mean? Well, suppose that instead of a dog smelling at his heel, it had been a man who had happened to bump into him. Well, I'd hate to be the man. He'd probably get killed. That's right. Then Springer shouldn't be carrying a gun, Matt. Yes, I know. Why didn't you take it off him or, or run him out of town? If I did that, whoever's paying him would just hire another gunman, Kitty. The only 
way to stop this killing is to find out who that is. Well, I hope you do before it's too late. That night I had Chester follow Springer around and keep an eye on him. But all he did was buck the Faro Bank for a few hours and then go to bed earlier than the most respectable citizens. Next day, Chester went back to trailing him while I sat in the office and tried to figure a way to trap him into telling me who'd hired him. By mid-afternoon, I was no further than when I'd started. The only idea I had was to choke it out of him. Yeah, what is it, Chester? That Nate Springer, he, he dug on near shot a girl over there. What? It one of the girls were at the Long Branch. What do you mean he almost shot her? Well, sir, he stayed in his room at the Dodge house all morning. So just Never mind noon, that. What about the girl? That's what I'm getting to. Well, just afternoon, he went over at the Long Branch and started gambling. He was sitting at a table in the corner with his back against one of them wooden windows, yeah. you know. And, and, and one of the girls that works there, well... I guess she needed a breath of air, so she slipped in behind Springer's chair and started opening that shutter. So wonder she got that far. Well, he just won. He was raking in the pot. But when he heard her, I never see a man move so fast, Mr. Dillon. That poor girl near about fainted the way he jumped around at her. She's lucky she didn't get shot. He had a six-gun stuck right in her face. He was within a hair of letting go of that hammer. And when he seen who it was, he started cussing her something fierce. Getting worse. Yeah, and he's gonna kill somebody, sure, acting a fool that way. Yeah. And it probably won't even be the one to come here to kill, neither. Imagine him. About to shoot a woman. I guess I can't wait any longer, Chester. What are you gonna do? Well, I'm gonna shame him first. If that doesn't make him talk, I'm gonna have to run him out of town. All right, come on. <laughs> Dylan, I can't help thinking all your friends who told you about Nate Springer were mighty poor judges. He's about the uncoolest gunman I ever saw. I agree about that, Chester. Who was it told you about him last? I don't remember. It's been two or three years. Maybe just a lot of rumor. You know how the talk gets started sometimes. Uh, Wyatt Earp was the first man who told me about him. Uh-huh. When we got inside here, you go to the bar and you stay there, huh? Yonder he is, Mr. John. Yeah, I see him. Yes, Springer. Springer. Come over here. You're interrupting my game, Marshal. Your game's over, Springer, for good. What's that mean? Get out of Dodge. What? If you've been paid in advance, you better give him back his money. You're not going to earn it. You're saying I ain't... It's an hour to sundown. Be out of town before dark. It's a long time since a man's talked to me like that, Marshal. How long's it been since a dog scared you into shooting him or since you drew on a woman? You've lost your nerve, Springer. You're not going to kill anybody. You shut up. I'll shut up. You tell me who hired you. No. No. Then who are you supposed to kill? I won't tell you. I didn't think you would. And be out before dark, Springer, and don't come back. Ever. Hello, Matt. Doc. What are you standing out here for? 
Why aren't you inside with the feet on your desk the way you usually are? I'm waiting for somebody, Doc. Uh, oh. Oh, you, you sound serious. Nate Springer, Doc. He's got about 20 minutes to leave town. Was that so? Well, you... You finally had to come around to it, huh? Yeah, he's still on the long branch over there. If he doesn't come out before dark, I'm going in after him. Well, there comes somebody. Huh? Oh, that's Chester. Oh, yes. Sure is. is there going to be a shooting, Matt? I doubt it. Dark Springer's already back down. Well, you never know. I'll, I'm going to get my things ready just in case. Yeah, sure, Doc. I better come tell you. What, Chester? Springer's been bellied up to the bar over in the Long Branch for the last half hour. He has? Yes, sir. Been drinking down one glass after another. Yeah, Doc was right. You never know. What? He's getting ready to use his gun, Chester. I'm going over and stop him. Look. He just come out. Yeah. Uh-uh. He's headed this way. You stay here. But you didn't drink, Springer. I never did before. You started too late. You haven't time to find your man. You're leaving town. I've found him. What? You, Marshal. It's you I'm going to kill. Who had you, Springer? Let's draw, Marshal. I feel like it now. Let's draw. Don't be a fool. You're drunk. Not that drunk. I can kill you. And then I'll be all right again. Now. No. Somebody like you to get my nerve back. Don't you understand? Yeah. Yeah. I understand. Didn't work. No. And I... I paid everything I had for it. It cost me everything... Produced and directed in Hollywood by Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. The story was specially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston. Featured in the cast were John Porkham and Jess Kirkpatrick. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. This is George Walsh inviting you to join us again next week when CBS Radio presents another story of the Western Frontier. When Matt Dillon, Chester Proudfoot, Doc, and Kitty, together with all the other hard-living citizens of Dodge, will be with you once more. 
It's America growing west in the 1870s. It's Gunsmoke. Gunsmoke. 